For a few years now I've had this lightweight AR-10. It's a custom build and I'll do a review on that shortly. Uh, but ever since I've had it I've just had some open sights on it. And I've thought about or I guess even planned on putting a scope on it at some point. And finally I got a scope. Uh, this is the Leupold Mark IV MRT 1.5 to 5 20 millimeter. Uh, that's the objective size is 20 millimeters. And it's got the M2 knobs on it. And the reason I chose the 1.5 to 5 instead of something more, something more powerful is simply because my idea for this gun is as an urban rifle. So something I wouldn't intend on shooting a long way. And I've got my, you know, I call it a sniper rifle. I know people make fun of me for that, but that's that's what I call it. That's what it is to me. And I've got that if I want to shoot further. It's got a 4.5 to 14 on it and a longer barrel and a heavier barrel. So uh, its intent is for greater distance precision shooting. This one is more as just a handy um, rifle for shorter distances. So that's why I chose the 1.5 to 5. So let's crack this open and see what's inside the box. We got the scope here. And on the end here, just the covers, loophole sticker, um, a little discount card here, join the NRA, Allen wrench, and I'm sure that's to reset the, um, the knobs after you get it zeroed in. A couple manuals. Um, rifle scope user's guide and a guide to loophole reticles. So, spend a few minutes and it's probably a good idea to read those. And a battery. You may think that's weird, but I'll explain what that's for. So, as with anything you get from loophole, at least in my opinion, this is real nice feels super solid. It's aluminum. This is a 30 millimeter tube. Um, they've got different different knobs you can get. These, um, one click is a half minute of angle and this says 566 or 556 62 grain and on the, t on, the uh, on the barrel here of the focusing knob there's a whole bunch of little graduated lines and numbers in there but there's also numbers every so often above those and those are yards so there's one for a hundred two hundred three hundred and they get further apart the further you go because the further the bullet flies the the greater its downward speed because it's accelerating downward at the, at the rate of at the acceleration due to gravity so thirty two feet per second per second so the, the further it goes the faster it's moving downward so those numbers are further apart, but they're graduated for a 5.56. I think you can get custom barrels based on a specific bullet and a, a speed that your bullet, that your hand load is spitting that bullet out the muzzle. So anyway, that's that's the elevation knob and of course windage over here on the right. Um, you can see there's a zero and a plus minus and this would just be the focus, I think. But there's it's interesting, there's no I don't see a a mark on this on the focus barrel. So I don't see why there's like a zero there, because there's nothing to line it up with. Um here is your magnification. There's one point five, and if you spin it clockwise, it goes up to five. It looks like that's right about oh, maybe 110 degrees of movement it requires to go uh, from lowest power to highest power. 20 millimeter objective like I said. Um, ah, and what is this big lump on the back? So as you're looking through the scope this will be at about the I don't know 10 30 or 11 o'clock position and there's an off position, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then off at the other extreme as well. 
this scope has an illuminated reticle and uh, I think if you look at all of Leupold's illuminated scopes or scopes with illuminated reticles they'll have a knob that looks just like this one and everything on here uh, this actually that might be aluminum too I think I think everything on here is aluminum it's just really nice this uh, I think I paid 900 bucks for it I got a few other things too so I don't remember exactly but I think it was 900 bucks and the the price of loophole scopes will vary uh, depending on the reticle you get I think some of them are more difficult to make some of them they may pay licensing fees um, to other companies so that could affect the price that you pay if you were to get um, a scope like this one but with a different reticle it might be a different cost and I got this from Optics Planet um, Ah, so the battery and the illumination setting knob here. The top of it is just a cap that screws off real easily. Uh, it's, I'm not sure if there's an, if there's an o-ring or what. Most of, ni of uh, loophole scopes I think are nitrogen filled so they're they're not gonna fog up and they're waterproof. Um, I'm assuming that this would keep water out as well but I haven't I haven't read the manual on it yet so let's let's try this I'm gonna put it in that way let's just set that there and there's a piece of foam right there on the inside of the cap that should apply even pressure to the battery. Yeah, I think I think it needs to I think it needs to pop down in there. So I think I'm gonna need to apply a little more. Yeah, okay. You've got to apply quite a bit of pressure to pop it down. It's got these little gold tabs around that it snaps into. So you've got to gotta to apply some pressure to it. It's a CR2032 battery. You may actually have some of those sitting around the house. So the battery's in there. Let's put this cap back on. Good. That feels like it's feels like it's they must have a seal around there because of the the drag that you get when you push on it. Okay, and the the reticle is illuminated. Okay, so the way this works, the eight is the brightest. If you like it on the brightest, there's an off right next to it, so you can just one click will get it over to the brightest setting. If you like it dimmer, you can have the off on this end, and one click will get you to the dimmest setting. So if you like some of the dimmer settings, you'd use this off. If you like some of the brighter settings, you'd go to that off, because you can just pick the off that's closer to the setting that you like. And uh Interestingly, in between the numbers is also off. So basically, it doesn't matter where you are, you don't need to pick one of those end positions marked off. Whatever the brightness is you like, just one click either to the left or to the right, and it'll be off. Or you can just slam it all the way one direction or the other and it'll be off. So that's the scope. Now, I'm gonna mount this thing. I got the loophole. I think it's integral mounting system. Yeah, it says right there. Mark for IMS and down here it says integral mounting system. And in this case you need to, for this component of it, you need to pick the ring size. 30 millimeters for this or you could pick one inch if you have a one inch scope and then this is the base mark four base so this clamps onto the receiver and this connects to this I wasn't ever exactly sure how this worked because I couldn't find online um, pictures that showed how it worked but after getting it it's completely clear let me crack it open and show you Uh, all right, 
the screws are all in there and the base all right so here's how this works all the pictures on the internet that I ever saw of this thing just showed this you could never see how this attached to this and they said oh it's adjustable you can move it back and forth depending on how far away you need to get the scope from your eye um, so I wasn't sure how that worked but then it arrived in the mail and it became clear so we got the screws in here and there's an allen wrench it's actually not an allen wrench it's actually a a torx head looks like on both ends of this allen like wrench but um but it's a torx pattern some people call it a star but uh that's for your caps to tighten onto the tighten the scope in here but here's the part I didn't know about we've got four threaded holes in the bottom of that and four holes here and this came with four screws and loopholed seems like they always put a little bit of a Loctite like material just a blob of it on all the screws so that when you first use them it'll have something to keep it in place so basically those four holes line up so I can put those four holes all in alignment with each other and the idea would be that the gun is pointed this direction and this mount gets the scope a little further from your eye to give you appropriate eye relief but the nice thing about this is although uh, honestly as I think about it I'm not sure that it's necessary there might be cases where it is that I just don't know about um, the idea is that you can line up all four of those holes together or you could line up the three on these with those three or those three those two those two just line it up however you want so that this can scoot back and forth the thing is to make that change you'd need to loosen these and remove the base from your Picatinny rail and at that point you could simply move the scope back and forth um, I suppose if you have other things mounted underneath here on the rail then you extending this over them might be the only solution although I'm not sure what you'd have under there that would create the need for that so I'm actually not sure when you'd offset these holes but you can do it you can line up whichever holes you want and offset it forward or backward I'm just going to start out by lining up all four together and I will use all four screws in all four holes and I'll see if that gives me proper eye relief. Also, of course, when you put the scope in there, you can scoot the scope back and forth. So really, there's several ways of adjusting exactly where your eyepiece ends up relative to your eye. Offset these two things, move this back and forth on your Picatinny rail, or slide the scope within the rings, and you've got a couple inches, maybe an inch and a half or so that you could, uh, of leeway, for scooting the scope back and forth. So there's that. There's the scope. Um, that's it. Loophole IMS, integrated mounting system, which I guess is just what they refer to this piece as in the Mark IV base, and Loophole MRT Mark IV, one and a half to five power scope.